Hello, my name is Isaiah Gathers and I'm the founder, owner, and head instructor of the Academy of Student Tide, located in Hazel Park, Michigan, right outside of Detroit. Detroit is one of the toughest cities in the nation, with even tougher people. In these difficult times, business owners are struggling and suffering. To keep the doors open, in addition to teaching martial arts, I also started a cage fighting organization and grappling organization. Here's a behind the scenes look into what it takes to successfully run a martial arts business. One of the things that we do to provide a supplemental income for the school is host amateur cage fighting shows. Jamie, how are you? Not a lot. How about with you? No, I hear that. Hey, listen, um, as it stands right now, I don't really have anybody, I don't think, for, on this card for you to fight. Um, the guys that I have, they, they have a lot more experience than you. I've got one. Well, no, 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 no. The, the, please don't be offended. I, I'm a fair matchmaker. I'm not saying that you're not capable of being successful. It's just that you know, I, I don't. I'm not gonna call you back and tell you, hey man, I'm gonna throw you in there with the guy that's got six fights or a guy that's got ten fights. You know, then you've got two fights. I mean, that that would that would be unscrupulous unless you're like, hey man, you know, I, I want to take the fight. You know, so the guy. Well, I got two possibilities. One guy has one guy's record is three one and two. He's actually one of my guys. I know you've been training for years. Like I don't, I don't have a ton of fights under my belt, but I've been doing martial arts 21 years. So I, I do, I do understand that you know the record doesn't speak for the amount of experience that you have. Bye bye. Oh, and normally the way that we do the matchmaking for the mixed martial arts, the MMA cage fighting, is we do them by weight and we do them by experience level. You know, so this guy is 215 pounds and his record's one and one. You know, I have other guys that are around that weight, but they've got six fights. You know, this guy saying he's fought over in Amsterdam. He's he's trained for all of these years. His record doesn't reflect his experience, and he wants to challenge. I'm sorry, no, he's not available right now. He's teaching. So sometimes, if you're having a difficult time, you can work on turning back over. A lot of people turn over on their stomach anyway because they don't want to get punched in the face. So he throws a punch in the face, bam! Guy turns over, I don't want to get punched in the face anymore. This is worse. Because I can't see what's coming now. So he can hit me, he can start choking me. So in this position, I might want to turn back over if I can, and then I can work on, I see him now, I can work on escaping. The other option, this is more challenging, I'm going to teach you guys the technical ways, and then when you guys go to town, I don't know what you guys are going to do. The other, the other way is, if this is an MMA fight, I know the guy can't do what? He can't hit me in the back of the head. Okay, so that means I want to take all the targets away. So I'm just going to curve up like this here. Okay, so now he can only hit my hands. He's not going to get any good shots in. So watch. I want to push and turn like this here. Okay, it's called a shrimp crawl to this position. And look at this foot. This foot's still inside. He's going to be punching me. And I'm just going to kick up. And I'll can face him. It's so hard, you know. Most most guys who promote these things, they don't do the matchmaking themselves. They hire somebody else on the outside just to do the matchmaking for them, because it's difficult to promote the show and matchmake. And then you know you train your own fighters. And not only that, but you have to be an honest guy, you know, because it can be a conflict of interest. You know, some guys can handpick people to fight their guys and, and set the fights up. You know, but we've never had an issue with the fairest organization you know, around. And that's why people keep on fighting for us, you know, because they know that we're fair. Sometimes my guys win, sometimes they don't. You know, but we're fair and we're honest, and that's the reason why we've been around for a while and we're going to keep being around. Josh is fighting for the belt. He's fighting for Donald's belt. Where is that? Right here. Josh is fighting Sequoia. That's going to be a title. And then this guy, Lamar. But I just thought about it. He says guy Lamar's around 170. Maybe I could put him with Emmett. And he's got two fights, though. Are you going to let him after you told him no because he wasn't training? Hello? Um, All right, thank you. This is Ryan.
Hey, what's up, Ryan? You all right? I'm okay. Listen, I, I'm calling you only. I don't, I don't know if you want to, to do a tune-up fight before you fight for this belt. I got a guy that's 230, and he's um one and one. And he says he doesn't mind fighting somebody with a few more fights than him. No, 100%. Let's just do it. Let's do it. Let's take the fight. Let's do it. I think it's going to be a good confidence builder for you. I think it's going to be a good momentum boost. I know you're going to win. I'm 100% confident in you. You know what I mean? Let's let's get our hand raised, and then get they'll give me two weeks to help you with anything that any holes in your game, and we get ready for this title shot. Let's do it. You're welcome. Bye. You know how Ryan. Why do you even give him a choice? I mean, well, he, he said he said he said that he he really wants to win this belt because you know obviously he wanted to win the other belt and. Obviously, he got you know he got clipped and, and he lost his title shot. So this is redemption. He gets an opportunity to fight under a different organization for another title right. shot. Right, but what I'm saying is that he need the confidence, like you said. I agree. 100%. You know how he is. But he's a good fighter, he, but he's so give, he's not confident. But in if himself. you give him an ultimatum, say, hey, it's up to you. If I want to, I don't do like it. to force feed him nothing, you know, because you know he's the one got to get in there. I don't want him to feel like, well, Master Gavin is pushing me and pushing me. You know, I like to hear what his mindset is. All right, speak to Jamie. Hey, Jamie, it's Isaiah giving you a call back. Oh, nothing much. All right, I think I got you matched up with somebody. All right, your opponent's name is uh, Ryan King, and he's like 225 pounds. And like I said, his record is 3, 1, and 2. Um, The Wands, he'll be at the Wands tomorrow, so you're going to make it to the Wands tomorrow. They're at um 7 o'clock. Um, wow, so you're going to need a ride there to the, so, but you will be able to make it to the, to the village on Friday, right? It's just kind of a reassurance thing that we like to do. Um, I find most of the people who don't show up to the wands, most of the time don't show up to the fights. You know? All right, if you got any other questions, give me a call. Other than that, I'll see you tomorrow at 7. All right, thank you. No problem. Bye. All right, all of that for one fight. They, they call here. They think they're tough. They've never had any fights before. They don't train. I don't know what kind of guy gets in the cage and doesn't, doesn't train, hasn't trained at all, never trained, you know, haven't done anything before, and they call here, and they think they're tough guys. It's exciting. He'll be at the Wands tomorrow, so we'll get a chance to see this guy at the Wands. A lot of these fighters, you know, they, they, they don't have a lot of money. They don't have a lot of income. A lot of these guys are using mixed martial arts because it's so popular. The cage fighting's popular. They're using it. They want to make a career out of it. And some people are patient. Some people aren't. When you start doing this activity, there's no money involved because you're an amateur. You know, you don't have any experience. You know, but most of these guys, they don't have cars. They're catching the bus. This guy said he heard about us because he was walking past the place where the fight's going to be at, and he saw the sign out front. You know, so, he, you know, a lot of these guys have trouble making it to the venue, which is crazy. You know, but they're looking for an avenue, something that they're good at already, and they can make a career out of it. So it's like chasing that, that, that million dollar lottery ticket. That's what these guys are doing here with this fighting. This business, these guys are unscrupulous. 100% unscrupulous. You know, it's, they don't have the honor or integrity of martial artists in the MMA world. And that's the reason why, you know, we don't call ourselves a, a gym or a club. We're a martial arts school, you know, and I train martial artists who engage in MMA. And MMA, for those who don't know, is abbreviation for mixed martial arts. But what many of these guys are, they're cage fighters. They're actually missing the martial arts portion of it. You know, and you know, you see it in these guys' behavior. They have no loyalty. They have no honor. You know, they jump around from school to school, or should I say gym to gym, you know, you know, at their leisure. They they sign agreements and contracts and they break them, you know, like like, the, like like it's no problem at all. You know, this guy, you know, comes to my school after my guy fights him for a title last Didn't year. Did he sign a contract with us he, that he, should be in collections? He punches, my guy punches him, breaks his jaw. The guy comes in with his mouth wired shut. Comes in and signs a contract saying he wants to, you know, I want to train with you guys. Train Signs for, for a year, contract, you know, and says he wants to train with us because we're the best. Disappears out of the picture. Nobody sees oh, yeah. him for two or three months. I hear that he's went down to Florida to train with the American top team. Then he's back in Michigan calling me, saying that he wants to fight. He trains at another gym. Sir, just because you big don't mean nothing. You the bigger you is, the harder you going to fall. Oh!
man. Yeah, that's good. Look yeah. at this guy, sexy as he want to be. Look at him. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Hey. 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 335 to 268. You know what? Look at All right, today's the day of the weigh-ins for the uh, cage fights that we're having tomorrow. And this is a very hectic day. I mean, in fact, I've had two, two phones to my ear almost uh, simultaneously, and then people texting me at the same time. My assistant has to run out and grab um, bands and all type of last-minute things. And uh, today's the day that we pretty much start finalizing everything as far as um, going through our checklist, making sure that we've got everything situated. Um, security, uh, making sure that they're in place, uh, calling all of the fighters, making sure that they're going to be at the weigh-ins, um, making sure that there's no back outs or no injuries or no illnesses, um, and just making sure that all of our ducks are in a row. So um, this evening you guys will get an opportunity to see a lot of the fighters who are going to be on the car weigh in and uh, meet their opponent for the first time and uh, match things up. So it should be an exciting night. So see you later. If you have a fight name, if you want to put your school, whatever you want the uh, ref to say when you want to be walking down. Over perseverance and indomitable spirit. I don't have something like my thighs. I bet you do. I bet you. Take your stuff off and you win, girl, at the next one. And then we'll see what somebody got to say about you. I'm wearing this outfit too. You better not. You want to fit that thing. That thing better blow up your behind like a rope thing. You better put somebody out. So? Okay, fit that. You got something to say about that? I ain't trying to come on no stage looking stupid. She can't. She likes Spider-Man. She gonna Spider-Man. That girl gonna beat you. Spider-Man. Where's the cover? You ain't supposed to have something like in your thighs. I don't know what you're supposed to have, but she got a butt and you don't, and now you got an issue with it. How you know she got a butt? What you looking at her butt for? I was over there for these pictures of her because, you know, it's... Your wife's here. My wife's here. I can do this. She's present. All right, so I call the three. One, two, three. All right, yeah, so you still want to do it? Okay. He's he's about he's about 187, but he realizes that you're heavier, and he said he'll take the fight anyway because he just wants to fight. Quote me on that. First 30 seconds. First 30 seconds. You're going to defeat your guy. 25. If I feel good about if I if I want to uh, impress y'all a little bit more, you know what I'm saying? Show show you what I'm working with. I get you in 25. You talk a little jive, I'ma drop you in five. You talk a little more, I'ma drop you in four. If you want to if you want to see me, then I'll drop you in three. This if you in three, three. And then, three. and then, if if I know what I'm do, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drop you in two. And if I wanna have a little fun, I'm gonna drop you in one. Run tell that. <laughs> what is this, Muhammad Ali? Having the suit ties finest. How many, how many, how many, how many, how many uh, copyright infringements he done made on that one? Can we count? Can we please count? You just stole a couple from Ali. The last one we stole from Martin Lawrence. That was a movie. How many else you got? Hey, so I made up myself. Shut up. Welcome to the Academy of Suit and What's the problem, man? What's the problem? Oh, you run like this, like there's a problem. Something wrong? Huh? Yeah, you run like this, I thought something was wrong. Oh, okay. Oh. Like drawing a hand trace They recognize my face from fathers to grandson Can't remember what's my name, they calling me handsome My ladies buck too, but care about what you do The ground game and stand up, it's sicker than bird flu We speed like flow, Joe, just stay off the flow, yo Is y'all training in the gym, but we doing the dojo You are alive We gon' this same
And the first thing that happens when a fighter gets to the cage is he stopped by, uh, they call him the, uh, the doorman or the gorilla guy, or they have different names for him. And uh, that's the guy who's entrusted with making sure that the fighters are Vaseline, um, so that way um, their, their skin is loose, is not tight, because they're going to be taking shots to the face, punches and elbows. And um, this will make sure that they don't get cut easy, um, and it, it really helps with, with the um, loosening the skin up. So that way, it's it's not um, stiff and it's not uh, real easy to be able to uh, start, like I said, getting cut. Again, representing the Academy of Sodu Thai in the blue corner, Ryan King. And, uh, here's Ryan coming out right here. Uh, they announce Ryan King's name and he comes out with the rest of the Academy of Sudan Thai entourage. They typically let um, anybody who wants to walk out with you walk out. But they only allow two people in each corner, you know, at the cage. Your corner man and um, your coach. Just like you see here, like we talked about, Ryan's getting the Vaseline put on and he's, he's ready to go into the cage. And it's cool, our fighters have a lot of rituals. Uh, one of the rituals that fighters typically have is the fact that um, they enter the cage in different ways. They enter the cage or the ring in various ways. So this is gonna be an exciting one. What you see is a sign of respect. The fighters will sometimes raise their glove up and look across the cage to their opponent. And basically what they're asking them is, hey, do you wanna tap gloves before we fight? And when you raise your glove up and look at your opponent, your opponent will either shake his head and say yes, I do want to touch gloves before we get busy, or he'll shake his head no and say no, we've already touched gloves, you know, at the beginning and I just want to throw down. So uh, Ryan just basically darts out of his corner and um, he throws, start, just starts throwing punches. And you see he connects with this combination right here. It looks like it's a uh, right-left combination and just drops his opponent. Ryan celebrates because as you guys were able to see throughout the episode, he was working very hard to prepare for this fight. And uh, we train hard so that the fight is easy. We always say that the fight is the dessert. You know, you, you work hard in training, and then the fight is the fun part. You know, training is what everybody hates to do. You know, but when you go out there and you get a 15 second knockout, you know, that's what all the training is for. All of those weeks and hours of training was um, to be able to get that quick knockout. This is James Rymatic. He uh, works every one of our shows. 
He's just making sure that the fighter's okay. He checks to make sure the guys don't have a serious concussion, asks them a, a series of questions, and just make sure that they are coherent and that they're safe because this is all about the safety of the fighter. And um, you know, that's basically it. Uh, Ryan's gonna give his thank yous. Ryan, that was the punch felt around here so far, fam. Yeah. We saw that, we felt it. How do you feel about the fight? Um, I felt good. His next fight that we have is um, with, uh, Anthony Coleman, and this guy, uh, his name is uh, Sherwood. And, you know, both of these guys are some big boys. You know, they're 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 uh, they're heavyweights. You know, heavyweights and super heavyweights. I think Sherwood was weighed in over 300 pounds. So I mean, that's just that's just what they call super heavyweight. You know, but he's in shape as you can see, and he walks out with an entourage. You know, or his uh, his coaches in his corner. And those basically are your, your support groups. Those are the people who's trained you. And what they're doing is they're whispering, they're whispering in his ear, telling him that he's better. You know, he's, he's better than this guy. Nobody's better than him. Nobody can train harder than him. His opponent in the blue corner from the Academy of Sodu Thai, Anthony, the bad guy, Coleman. see Anthony he's um uh, he's talking with with Mike and Mike's doing the same thing he's just telling him the same thing hey man you know you can defeat this guy you've trained harder than this guy etc etc so just really building up the fighter before they enter the cage and Anthony likes to be called the bad guy you know that's his nickname he calls himself the bad guy you know um, and he has this little moniker you know that he's a bad guy and unlike Ryan who uh, wanted to touch gloves before the fight started Anthony doesn't. Anthony doesn't like touching gloves. You know, so when his opponent, you know, wants to come out and touch gloves, Anthony always says no. You know, and he just shoots out with that left hand, you know, and um, they get busy. They, they, they are tangled up now and they're working against the cage. And you'd be surprised, most of the fight, no matter how big the cage is, it actually takes place right up against the cage. And they're both basically um, vying for a takedown. And you see Anthony create some space. You know, and they go back to the center of the cage and they start working striking again. Sherwood does a great job pressing Anthony back up against the cage. And he tries something that we basically call kind of like a sacrifice throw. Where he's going to fall back on his hip and he's trying to roll Anthony over and end up on top. But because he did it incorrectly and he kind of just fell and pancaked straight back, Anthony was able to maintain his, his balance and just end up on top of Sherwood. So um, now he's doing some striking and he's going for a submission. And Anthony's working really hard in this training camp, you know, on his submission game. And uh, I think he's really trying to make a statement here. So he can continue striking and you hear everybody furiously yelling at him, throw punches, throw elbows. But um, Anthony's trying to make a statement. He's really attacking hard for this submission. A lot of the bigger guys aren't quite as flexible as some of the smaller guys are. So the submission game, you know, is a good game to be able to exercise because the bigger guys, sometimes they can really take and absorb a lot of shots and a lot of strikes because they're heavier. But sometimes their shoulders aren't as, 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 as limber you know, as somebody who may be smaller, you know, or their joints aren't, you know, or sometimes they don't have as strong of a neck as some of the other guys, or as tough of a neck, so those chokes, you know, tend to um, affect them a little bit more. So 
Anthony um, feeds a sure with arm across, and he jumps off to the side right here, and he attacks something we like to call an arm triangle, and uh, he gets the submission. The opponent is tapping out, as you can see. Anthony's always, you know, a very emotional guy. He likes to play the role that he's like he's the bad guy, but you know what? He really loves what he does. He really cares hard, about, you know, cares about his training and his school and his training camp. He trained very hard for this. You guys saw him cutting weight, trying to get down to 265 the night before, you know, and um, he made weight and he really took the fight seriously. So it's a very big win for him. I think it's the first fight that he won by submission. You know, and um, you know he's really excited about it. So, uh, like I said, he's very emotional, but he's a he's a he's a great fighter. You know, and he's, he shows that love and sportsmanship. You know, um, sportsmanlike uh, conduct after the fight is over with, and he just sits here and he celebrates. And the guys always do funny things. You never know what you're gonna do when you win, when the fight's over with. Ryan tries to do a backflip off the cage. You know, and um, you know Anthony now he's sticking his tongue out and he's having his hand raised up. And he has a signature chain on. He always comes out to every fight with that chain on, you know, and he always leaves with that chain on. That's that's his moniker. That's what he likes to do. And um, you, you never know what you're going to do when you win because you're so excited. You're so focused on thinking about what you're going to do in the fight that when you actually experience that victory and that success, you never know what you're going to do. So these guys are just out here having fun and, and enjoying their victories. And um, they're, they're going to be ready for the next one. and when you guys are training, it's important that I remember, you know, the reason I'm learning these self-defense techniques is not because it's going to be on my testing, but because the ultimate test is if I have to use it on the streets. So my partner has to give me a certain amount of resistance, and I have to make sure that the techniques are very detail-oriented because this is the move that may be used to save my life someday or a family member or a friend. I may need this move, you know, so, you know, you have to look past. You know, me forgetting a form is major because that means that I've forgotten I've lost focus. And me losing focus, it only takes a second for me to lose focus when I'm crossing the street. A second for me to lose focus while I'm driving. A second for me to lose focus in, you know, in the fight before something bad happens. You know, I lose focus while I'm driving for a second, I'm in a car accident. I lose focus in the fight, you know what I mean, then I've lost the advantage. You know, so I have to stay focused, I have to stay diligent, and I have to stay serious about what I'm doing. Because the level of time that I put into developing it, you know, is going to be reflected, you know, when I hit that mat. Welcome to the Academy of Suit and Tie. Home of perseverance and indomitable spirit. Motor City Dojo. We are unstoppable, baby. Let's go. Suit ties on the rise comprise the quick guys. Slick guys, tough kids, effeminate chick mobs. I give you six tries.